Now, D-U-Z does brings you the Goldbergs. You? Is anybody? There's Molly, folks. That means your friends, the Goldbergs, are here. Brought to you by Does, the new kind of soap that does everything best. Say, what if I were to demonstrate our talking washing machine at one of your homemakers' club meetings? I'd say, ladies, you're about to hear a washing machine that talks. What's more, it has something mighty important to say. Now, here on stage is the machine. I'll just put some does in it, turn on the motor, and listen carefully. Now, it's proved by test which wash day soap is best. Does out does the rest. Does does everything best. What does that about does, 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 does the rest? Yes, does does everything and does it best. We proved it in conclusive tests against 25 different wash day soaps. Probably the very soaps you ladies use. My yes, we tested for whitest washes, most suds for cleaning, along with greatest safety for colors, and Does came out with a highest score. Beat them all. Well, well, that's a lot of Does, does to even say. Does? Well, some soaps couldn't compare with Does on safety. Some were inferior on suds and whiteness. Only Does scored tops on all three. Well, that's yeah. amazing. Yes? What do you wash in these tests? Handkerchiefs? <laughs> oh, man, we washed everything. Greasy work shirts, streaky towels, to the prettiest colored slips. And Does does everything. Thing best. Say, I've got plenty of streaky towels to wash. Yes. How'd you say does did on them? Say, does gets towels whiter than soap after soap we tested. None of them can do all does does and still match it for whiteness. Well, I wash overalls straight from a war plant. Overalls? Say, when we tested to see which soap gets work clothes clean with the least work, does scored tops again. Yet does turned around and scored tops on safety for colors, too. It actually leaves colors brighter. Well, well it does. does. It's it's pretty pretty good more than oh, I tell you, for whitest washes, most suds for cleaning, and greatest safety to colors combined, this new kind of soap tested best. Next time you buy wash day soap, remember, does does everything best. And now does invite you to visit the Goldbergs. Friendship, when it's born of mutual help in people's early years of poverty and struggle, is never completely forgotten, even though the friends have drifted far apart and have had different degrees of success. The proof of this is in the pudding, as they say. After all, Mrs. Mayer's hostility to Sammy as a son-in-law, after her refusal to be reconciled to the fact that Sammy and Dora are in love, she has finally come around. And why? Well, Molly's wisdom, for one thing, by reminding Mrs. Mayer of the old days when all the neighbors on 176th Street in the Bronx helped her and one another, Molly succeeded in shaming Mrs. Mayer into a reconciliation. And this in the lives of Sammy and Dora is a major triumph, although they know nothing about it yet. Meanwhile, there's something else the young lovers know nothing about. Listen. Ma. Baby. Baby. Spody. Spody, go home. Spody, go home. He's got to follow us to the station. <laughs> are you happy, Ma? Why, why shouldn't I be happy? Why shouldn't I be happy? Mrs. May and me are friends, no? And we're all going as one friendly family to the station to welcome Sammy and Dora. Isn't that better than if we were going separately and not friendly? Boys, here. Does Mrs. Mayer call you Molly? Why not? Why not? She's going to be Sammy's mother-in-law, no? She's a close relationship now, no? Oh, go, darling, go help Mrs. Mayer. She's trying to fix the buckle on her shoe. Where did Papa walk away so fast? He's walking with Mr. Mayer. Oh, Rosalie, I think Papa's calling Mr. Mayer Max, too. Mm -hmm. uh, are you ready, Mrs. Mayer? Yes. Uh, Deborah, dear. <laughs> uh, Rosalie, go and catch Papa, please, and tell him, tell him that we would like to get on the train one station before Lastonbury and surprise Sammy and Dora. Max! Well, don't bother, Deborah, dear. Why should you run? Rosalie will go. Jake, wait, don't walk so fast. Go tell Papa oh, Rosalie, don't stand, Hi. please. <laughs> Wait, that'll be a surprise when we get on the train. <laughs> oh, my. Mrs. McDevorah, <laughs> are, are you comfortable in your high heels, Devorah? They're not so high, Mrs. Goldberg. Uh, Molly. Molly. <laughs> Devorah. Yes? Oh, Dora will be so surprised. <laughs> uh, walk over here. Don't go by the pebbles with, with your open shoes. <laughs> Oh, Devorah, we'll, we'll even be better friends as time goes on, huh? Devorah? I want Dora to be happy. She's all I have. She's my only child. And Sammy? He'll be your child too, no? 
Sammy hates me, I think. I don't be foolish, because you objected for a little nonsense. It's over, it's past. And don't you know, Mrs. Mayer, when you're in love, you can't hate? There's no room for hate when you're in love. Well, Rosalie. Yeah, hurry, Mom. We can catch the bus at the crossroad. Yeah, and, and the bus will take us to the station before uh, Lassenberg, yeah. so we can go Clovis on Clovis Corners. Corners. But you have to Bumble. hurry, Mom. Sure, we will. We will. We don't have to run, because the bus will pass this way. We don't have to run. We only have to walk speedily. Is, is Papa going to go on the train also? I'll ask him. Do that, dear. Oh. Do that, darling. Hi. <laughs> oh, mine. Will the children be surprised? You'll get on the, the first car of the train, and I'll get on the last car, and then we'll walk together to see how we can find them, and we'll look Hi, for them. Mom, you the <laughs> I, I will, darling. I will. I will. Uh, be, be careful, Deborah. I'm all right. Deborah, you, you're crying. I'll have to learn how to live all over again. Why? Because your daughter's getting married? She filled my life. She won't need me anymore now. No, isn't that wonderful? What do you mean? Well, it's only when a parent is a failure that their children need them after their wings are strong. Animals know it. Why should that be such a hard lesson for us human beings to learn? It won't be easy to live. But it'll be easy to die. What do you mean? I mean, when my Sammy and Rosalie were little, each night I went to bed, I prayed for one thing, to live long enough to see them old enough not to be helpless, to see them, how shall I say, not only prepared for life, but, but, but being able to live it with, uh, with all its happiness and all its disappointments. And I think, um, I think my family is prepared. And I think Dora is prepared. They're in love. They're ready to live. So. We've done our part, Mrs. Mayor, the Bora dear. And I think, I think maybe we did it very the well. Bus, Mark, yeah? The bus, Yeah, the bus. The bus. We'll go on close to the corners. There's two more stops, Dora. And the prodigals will be home. Happy, Sammy? Does this train move? Is the sun shining? Am I in love with you? Answer me. Answer all three with one <laughs> word. Yes. Then, am I happy? Yes. And you? Does the train move? Is the sun... Stop. Skip all but the last. Am I in love with you? Yes. And you're happy. We're both happy. And nothing, nothing could spoil the magnificence of this day. You know, we should build a monument to it. Where, Sammy? Everywhere. Do you know what should be on it? I love you. That and something else. This. Listen. On this day, which only a handful will remember, two people, ordinary people, named Sammy Goldberg and Dora Mayer, discovered the miraculous promise of their lives. Sammy. Sammy. It, it, it's like a hope for the future, Dora. In spite of all the bloodshed, the ruin, there, there's something in people that can spring up with gladness, that can thrill with the hope of a future life together. I think we're stopping, Sammy. What station is this? It's uh, Clover's Corners. Oh. The next station's Lastonbury, isn't it? Yes. Your mother will be there at the station, I guess. I know mine won't be. Well, you'll come right over to our house. I'll have to call my mother and tell her. You can do that at the house. What's the matter, Dora? Nothing. You're crying. You call my mother, Sammy, and try to make her understand. I'll call her if you want me to. What will you tell her? The facts. We have a marriage license and that there isn't a thing she can do about it. Oh, Sammy, it. please don't talk like that. Why not, Dora? Because I... Dora, look at me. It's just going to be the both of us from now on. What must come first is ourselves. We have to build our world yet. Theirs is already built. And we'll build it no matter what your mother or anyone says. Sammy. Sammy. What? Your mother. There's your mother, Sammy. Where? Well, what's she doing on the train? <gasps> Sammy, there's my mother. Uh-oh, this is going to be good. Oh, please, Sammy. Let me handle this, please. Oh, Sammy. Ma? Oh, Mrs. Sammy. Mayer. 
Mrs. Mayer, let's understand one another right now. Sammy, please. Dora and I are going to get married no matter Sam what you say. Sammy, I don't care not... what you think of me. My respect of you is governed by your opinion of me. Sammy. But I do care about what you're trying to do to Dora. Sammy, so please. the less you say now, the less I'll have to remember but later. Sammy. And you'd better be careful of just what you say. Sammy. I have no reason to keep quiet any longer. Sammy, You've been selfish and unreasonable. You've used Dora for your own personal advancement Sammy. while you said it was for her happiness. Sammy, Sammy, Mrs. Mayer is only trying it's to It's not say... enough, Ma. I don't care what she's trying to say. Both of us have a right to our love. It's ours, all Sammy, ours, and no, nobody can take it away. No, I'm going to make your daughter happy, Mrs. Mayer. Isn't that enough? That's all I want. What else does a mother want? Ma! <laughs> Dora, oh, my Ma. baby. Oh, Sammy, my son. <laughs> Well, Sammy's outburst certainly turned out to be something of a tempest in a teapot, or fighting a straw man. Of course, he had no way of knowing that Dora's mother had had a change of heart about the marriage. But as surprised and glad as Sammy and Dora may be over this turn of events, they're still not married. And anything can happen before either of them says, I do. On a foggy night not many weeks ago, shadow-like men boarded a huge transport plane. Paratroopers, they were. As the plane left the earth, every man was silent. One reached in his pocket and drew out a small picture. You could read his thoughts in his face. Anne and little John, God keep you. There was another boy who kept clenching and unclenching his hands. Mom, I wish I could see Mom. Maybe I wouldn't be so scared. Yes, every man knew he might not come back. But thanks to our amazing new medicines, 99% of all the men wounded in France have been saved. Now, friends, we've got to keep those medicines pouring into Europe. And your used kitchen fat can help supply them. Used fat contains essential ingredients that help make many medicines. Don't throw away a drop. Scrape every pan. Scoop fat off soups. Skim fat off stews. Yes, scrape, scoop, skim, and save every drop of used kitchen fat you'll get two red ration tokens per pound. Be sure to listen to the next episode of The Goldbergs, written for you by Gertrude Berg and brought to you by D-U-Z Does. Sammy finds out just how serious a step marriage is. And, of course, the best advice is, after all, right there in his own home. This is Clayton Collier saying good day for the makers of Does, the soap that does everything best. At your dishpan, you have a war job, the job of fighting waste. Don't waste your soap. It contains war material.